Have you ever pondered the connection between human consciousness and the universe? Could it be possible that half of our consciousness or soul resides in our brain, while the other half exists in some remote corner of the universe or in higher dimensions? This is not just a philosophical conundrum, but a question that has intrigued scientists, philosophers and thinkers throughout history. Among them is Roger Penrose, a physicist who in 2020 was awarded half of the Nobel Prize in physics. His recognition was not for his research on the soul, but for using mathematical methods to prove that black holes are a direct result of Einstein's general theory of relativity. However, it was Penrose's exploration of the soul that sparked a storm of debate within the scientific community. Mainstream scientists questioned the awarding of such a prestigious accolade to someone whose research delved into the realm of souls and consciousness. The skepticism surrounding Penrose's award wasn't about his work on black holes, but rather his intriguing research on the soul. So, what is this theory that has caused such a stir in the scientific community? It's called Microtubule Quantum Target Reduction Tuning, a title that might seem baffling at first glance. Now let's break this down. In the mid-80s, Roger Penrose, the renowned physicist, and Yatus Stohamilov, an expert in anesthesiology and brain neurons, began exploring the nature of human consciousness. They were intrigued by the question, can electronic computers simulate human consciousness? After extensive research, they concluded that computers can never fully replicate the human brain's operations. You see, the computers we use operate based on a binary system, zeros and ones. It's a straightforward black and white way of processing, a stark contrast to the human brain's operation. Our brains don't just think in black and white, right or wrong. They entertain a spectrum of possibilities, a myriad of colors, if you will. Penrose used a simple example to illustrate this point. Imagine you're deciding what to have for lunch. You're considering two options, a steak or a hamburger. While you're pondering, you're not just thinking about the steak and completely disregarding the hamburger or vice versa. No, you're contemplating both options simultaneously, weighing the pros and cons. This simultaneous, multi-dimensional way of thinking is a fundamental characteristic of human consciousness that computers, with their binary processing, cannot replicate. But Penrose and Stohamilov didn't stop there. They ventured further into the realm of quantum physics, suggesting that our consciousness might not just be a product of our brains. Instead, it could be linked to the quantum realm, a place where particles can exist in multiple states at once, much like our thoughts. In essence, Penrose's theory suggests that our consciousness is far more complex than any computer can replicate, potentially even connected to the quantum realm. We've delved into a mind-bending topic today, haven't we? We've explored the intrigue surrounding Roger Penrose's Nobel Prize, a recognition that stirred controversy not for his groundbreaking work on black holes, but for his daring research on the soul. We've contemplated an audacious idea that half of our consciousness resides in our brain, while the other half might be tucked away deep in the universe or nestled in a corner of other higher dimensions. We've also unpacked Penrose's theory of microtubule quantum target reduction tuning, a complex concept that suggests our consciousness cannot be reduced to mere computer simulations. This theory challenges our traditional understanding of brain function and our binary perception of reality, suggesting that our consciousness operates in a realm beyond black and white thinking. As we ponder these ideas, we can't help but marvel at the infinite possibilities of our consciousness and its potential connections to the universe. Let's dive into the fascinating concept of quantum consciousness. This idea draws striking parallels to quantum computing, especially the idea of a superposition state. Just like quantum bits, or qubits, that exist in multiple states at once, our minds seem to juggle countless thoughts, possibilities and decisions simultaneously. When we ponder what to eat for lunch, it's not just a binary choice between steak or burgers. There are numerous factors at play, all superimposed and considered together, before we finally settle on a decision. This is remarkably similar to the superposition state in quantum mechanics. Renowned physicist Sir Roger Penrose even concluded that a traditional binary computer, with its rigid ones and zeros, simply cannot simulate this fluid, quantum-like nature of real human consciousness. So, if traditional computers can't simulate human consciousness, then what can? Let's delve into the world of brain neurons and meet Professor Kolomov, an anesthesiology expert who stumbled upon a unique connection now, Professor Kolomov's work primarily revolves around the study of brain neurons. 
During his research, he found that anesthetics largely affect brain neuron cells, only after acting on a certain microtubule structure within them. This observation piqued his interest. Why do anesthetics take effect only after acting on these microtubules? What role could these microtubules possibly play in the human brain, or more specifically, in our cranial nerves? Then he stumbled upon Penrose's book, The Emperor's New Brain. Reading Penrose's belief that the human brain's computing mechanism could very well be in a quantum state, everything started making sense. He hypothesized that the quantum state matter in these microtubules could be playing a decisive role in human consciousness. Once Kalomov connected the dots between microtubules and quantum consciousness, he sought out Penrose for a deeper exploration. So, what did Kalomov and Penrose discover when they combined their expertise? In their collaborative research, they uncovered a fascinating theory, one that bridges the gap between the vast universe and the intricacies of our own minds. They proposed that microtubules, structures within our brain's neuron cells, house quantum matter. These microtubules, they suggested, might be the very core of our consciousness, the engine behind our thoughts, feelings and perceptions. But their theory didn't stop there. They proposed that this quantum matter, nestled within the microtubules of our brains, could coexist in a superposition state with the quantum matter in the universe. This means that our consciousness might not be confined to the physical boundaries of our brains, but could instead be interconnected with the cosmos in a way we're yet to fully comprehend. This theory suggests that our consciousness, or perhaps even our soul, is in a superposition state with the universe. So what does this all mean for our understanding of consciousness and the universe? Well, if we accept the theory of quantum consciousness, it fundamentally alters our perception of how the brain operates. It suggests that our consciousness isn't just a product of neuronal interactions, but is deeply entwined with the fundamental properties of the universe. This has profound implications for future research and technological developments. It could lead to breakthroughs in artificial intelligence by showing us how to develop machines that think more like humans. It might also impact our understanding of mental health, offering new perspectives on conditions like depression and anxiety. Furthermore, it opens up a new realm of philosophical questions. If consciousness is a quantum process, what does that mean for concepts like free will and self-awareness? As we continue to explore the mysteries of consciousness and the universe, perhaps we'll find that they're more intertwined than we ever imagined. This age-old question has intrigued humanity for centuries. Today we delve into the profound concept of superconsciousness, a grand network of knowledge and experience that exists beyond our physical selves, akin to a cloud computing system on a cosmic scale. This vast expanse of consciousness, unfathomable and complex, may hold the secrets we seek about our existence and the universe. Amidst this mystery, a captivating theory emerges from the brilliant mind of renowned physicist Roger Penrose. He proposes that upon death, part of our consciousness, our soul, so to speak, embarks on a journey, departing from our physical form. This soul may venture into the deep cosmos or ascend into higher dimensions, like a cosmic traveler awaiting the right moment to return. As we continue to explore these mysteries, a captivating theory by renowned physicist Roger Penrose offers a fascinating perspective. So, what exactly is Penrose's theory? It's a blend of science and spirituality that explores the cycle of life and death. Take a moment and consider your consciousness, your very essence. According to physicist Roger Penrose, when we pass away, half of this consciousness, our soul if you like, detaches from our physical form. It doesn't just vanish into thin air, Instead, it embarks on a voyage, a cosmic journey into the universe, or perhaps into higher dimensions we can't even perceive. Imagine it like a cosmic traveler, a celestial nomad, unbound by time and space, free to explore the infinite expanse of the cosmos. It patiently waits, biding its time until the perfect moment arrives. And then, like a seed finding fertile soil, it returns, manifesting itself in a new physical form, beginning the cycle anew. It's an intriguing concept, isn't it? But there's more to this story. There's a book that seems to answer this question. The Secret of the Golden Flower, a work of Chinese Taoism co-edited by Western Sinologist Ferris and psychologist Carl Jung. The book paints a picture of yin and yang souls, two spiritual structures that interact with each other and our physical body. This concept mirrors Penrose's theory 
suggesting a balance of soul, both within us and beyond the physical realm. Imagine a soul living between your eyes, another in your abdomen, both in a constant dance with the law of life. It's a dance that shapes our human nature, our animality, and our daily struggles with the seven deadly sins. The book suggests that our reason, our consciousness, is in a constant tug of war with these internal forces. So here we are, left with the thought that perhaps our consciousness, our very souls, are more connected to the universe than we ever imagined. It's a thought that is both thrilling and humbling, isn't it? Is it in the heart, as some ancient philosophers suggested, or perhaps in the mind, as modern scientists might argue? This question has echoed through the ages. Ancient wisdom places the soul between the eyes, akin to our modern understanding of consciousness residing in the brain. They refer to this place as the heart of the sky, a poetic metaphor for the soul's position. In essence, the soul, or consciousness, is the master of man, possessing wisdom and spirituality beyond our physical selves. So, what makes up the wisdom of the soul? This wisdom, unlike the knowledge, IQ, or adaptability we acquire in daily life, is more akin to an understanding or spirituality. It's something intangible, invisible, yet omnipresent within us. This wisdom isn't bound by the physical senses that our body, the vessel given to us by the god of cookery, can perceive. It's an ethereal realm of comprehension that transcends our tactile experience. It's the wisdom of the soul that opens us to the universe, to the mysteries beyond our physical senses. But what happens when our physical selves begin to deteriorate, as in the case of Alzheimer's disease? Our bodies may weaken, our memories may fade, but what about the soul? What about the consciousness? Some suggest that in Alzheimer's patients the soul remains intact, but consciousness dwindles. It's as if the vessel is present, but the captain is lost in the fog. A state of existence where the soul remains but consciousness is diminished. This brings us back to the fascinating intersection of ancient Eastern wisdom and modern scientific theory. So, what can we glean from this exploration of the soul and its position? We've delved into the heart of the sky, between the eyes, and perhaps closer to the brain. We've pondered the unique wisdom of the soul, distinct from everyday knowledge. We've grappled with the Alzheimer's paradox, challenging our perceptions of consciousness. In the end, perhaps the soul's position is not a physical location, but rather a state of consciousness, a gateway to understanding the universe and our place within it.